Martin Renzelhoff, who has died aged 90, was a hands-on film producer, who had to fire directors and actors from time to time. These cruel-to-be-kind executive decisions were justified by his having a string of hits in the 1960s and 70s. Ransohoff is also remembered for having discovered the actor Sharon Tate, whom he introduced to her future husband, the director Roman Polanski. Tate was 20 and had previously worked in television and magazine advertisements when she met Ransohoff, the chairman of the production company Filmways in 1963. Although she had no acting experience, Ransohoff signed her to a seven-year contract, taking three years to groom her for stardom. In the meantime, he gave her small parts in his company's television productions of Mr. Ed and the Beverly Hillbillies, and walk-on roles in two features of which he was the producer, The Americanization of Emily, 1964, and The Sandpiper, 1965. Mr. Ransohoff didn't want the audience to see me till I was ready, Date recalled. He thought she was ready enough to play a witch in the supernatural thriller Rye, of the Devil, 1966. However, the female lead Kim Novak injured her back in a horse riding accident with only two weeks of shooting remaining. When Novak delayed a return to the film, unjustifiably, according to Ranzo Hoff, she was sacked by him and replaced by Deborah Kerr, and the cast, headed by David Niven, had to play many of their scenes again. It was a bitter end to a tempestuous relationship with Novak, who was under a three-year contract to Filmways and who had starred in Ranzo Hoff's first feature film, Boys Night Out, 1962. He had written the role of the bohemian artist in The Sandpiper for Novak, who refused to take it. The part was eventually taken by Elizabeth Taylor. Eye of the Devil, initially titled 13, had gone through three directors. Sidney J. Furry had been fired and replaced by Michael Anderson, who fell ill and was in turn replaced by J. Lee Thompson. A year earlier, Ranzo Hoff had fired Sam Peckinpah after four days shooting on The Cincinnati Kid, 1965, starring Steve McQueen. Principally, Ranzo Hoff felt that the tone of Peckinpah's direction was too dark, too realistic. Therefore he decided to take a chance on Norman Joyson, who had directed only lightweight romantic comedies hitherto. Ranzo Hoff's instinct paid off and The Cincinnati Kid, one of the best of gambling movies, became a critical and box office success. Ranzo Hoff was born in New Orleans during the Depression, the place and time of the setting of The Cincinnati Kid. His father, Arthur, was a wealthy coffee broker and his mother, Babette, nay Strauss, was active in Republican politics. Martin attended Wooster School in Danbury, Connecticut and graduated with a B.A. in History and English from Colgate University in New York in 1948. After a variety of odd jobs, he worked for an advertising agency as a writer and producer. In 1952, with Edwin Casper, he co-founded Filmways, which produced some of the biggest TV hits of the 1960s. In 1962, Ranzo Hoff moved into feature films with Boys Night, Out, a superficially daring comedy starring James Garner and Novak. Garner then appeared in The Wheeler Dealers, 1963, and The Americanization of Emily, both directed by Arthur Hiller. The latter movie, a Second World War satire, made expert use of Garner's light touch as an attractive heel. In 1967, Ranzo Hoff agreed to produce Polanski's horror comedy Dance of the Vampires, determined to give Tate her first starring role. Polanski wanted Jill St. John for the role of the tavern owner's daughter kidnapped by the local vampire lord, but Ranzo Hoff insisted on Tate. Polanski and Tate married a year later, and she was pregnant with their child when she was murdered by followers of Charles Manson in 1969. The film was a commercial and critical flop, which Polanski blamed on Ranzo Hoff for allowing MGM, the distributing company, to chop 20 minutes out of the movie in the U.S., read up some of the voices and change the title to the farcical The Fearless Vampire Killers, or pardon me, your teeth are in my neck. Polanski recalled that Ranzo Hoff on first meeting had seduced me with his artist-like attitude. The film was reappraised positively when the director's cut was found some years later. Ranzo Hoff's further money-making productions compensated for this aberration. Ice Station Zebra, 1968, a Cold War thriller starring Rock Hudson and, based on Alistair MacLean's 1961 novel, the rights of which the producer bought in 1963, and Castle Keep, 1969, an eccentric anti-war drama with Burt Lancaster, directed by Sidney Pollock. 
In the UK, Ranzohoff produced Peter Hall's A Midsummer Night's Dream, 1968, Tony Richardson's Hamlet, 1969, with Nicole Williamson in the title role, and Richard Fleischer's Ten Rillington Place, 1971. Back in the US, his production of the low-key drama Save the Tiger, 1973, won a Best Actor Oscar for Jack Lemmon. In a lighter mood were two comedies starring Gene Wilder, Silver Streak, 1976, and Hanky Panky, 1982. The best of his later movies were two gripping courtroom dramas, Jagged Edge, 1985, and Guilty as Sin, 1993. Ranzo Hoff had objected strongly to the casting of Glenn Close in the former movie instead of Jane Fonda, who had declined the role of the ace lawyer, but he was overruled by the front office. So vociferous were his expletive-laden opinions that, Close had him barred from the set. He is survived by his second wife, Joan Marie, named Maggie, whom he married in 1980, and three sons from his first marriage, to Nancy Hope Lundgren, which ended in divorce. Martin Ranzohoff, film and television producer, born July 7, 1927, died December 13, 2017.